Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. May 13th, 2024. Let's get into it. So the first part is I've been getting a lot of pushback on my support of the students protesting uh, the Palestinian genocide that's been taking place in Israel. So I just want to start the video because I know everybody's attention span is, is all of th three minutes these days. Let's get George Galloway. Uh, he is much more well-spoken than I am, a much more intelligent person than I am. Let's get his take on the genocide of the Palestinians. It's the only red lines, it turns out, around Rafah. You know, the red lines that were drawn by President Biden, that were drawn by the European Union that were drawn by the British government, by the United States' Western allies, by the Arab countries, uh, by Egypt, whose national sovereignty, of course, was umbilically connected to the issue of Rafah because Rafah ends where Egypt begins. And the Philadelphia Corridor, which separates Gaza from Egypt, is protected by the Camp David Accords and indeed therefore is an international law all of its own that has been broken by the Israeli seizure of the Rafah Gate. The better to open it and drive machine gun, herd, maybe even cattle truck the Palestinian refugees into the Sinai Desert. It would be biblical except it is hell on earth in Rafa. 1.6 million people, 600,000 of them, child hostages. That's what they are. Next time you hear anyone talking to you about hostages, tell them the 600,000 child hostages in Rafa. How are they hostages? Because they are enclosed from all sides, including the sea. Even if they wanted to walk into the sea and drown themselves, They'd be blown up first by the Israeli naval guns just offshore. 600,000 children, hostages, being massacred right now. This minute, not last hour, this minute they are being massacred. And of course, the journalists have been occupationally cleansed from the scene. And so only the shakiest handheld cameras are now bringing us children with their entrails spilling out of their gashed, open stomachs. Children without heads, children without legs. The legs themselves, the heads themselves. Yes, we're still all seeing it, or at least those who have a heart, those who have a mind as to what all this presages for the future of humanity. We are all still seeing it. All right, so that was George Galloway, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that... I, I'll just let that video speak for itself. I, I don't really have anything to add to that other than, you know, that the uh, uh, you hear on uh, right-wing radio, uh, uh, Mike Johnson, all of the, the right-wing politicians, even, even Trump, you know, they're saying, you know, we've got to support Israel. We've got to... When you're dropping 2,000-pound bombs on 1.2 million civilians... Do you really think that's defeating Hamas? I mean, Hamas is safe down in their tunnels. And then, then what I heard, there was an Israeli Zionist. He was on the radio. I can't remember which talk show it was because, you know, when I just go and walk the dog, uh, you know, I just kind of listen. And, you know, sometimes I pick up something. But the guy was, this is, a, is Israeli Zionist was going on about how 70% of the Palestinians support Hamas Therefore, 70% of the Palestinians need to die. Okay, if you're a freaking genocidal maniac, I guess so. But you have to understand, Hamas was the uh, Palestinians' only way out of the Gaza uh, prison. You know, I, I've done, I've given my escape from New York uh, analogies. I mean, go look at escape from New York. So that's what that was all about, and that's why they support Hamas. Uh, do you believe that, you know, a million people need to die just because they support an organization that was trying to get them out of their, their open-air prison? I, I, that's all I got to say about it. 
Uh, let's get on to the Ukraine war for just a minute. So the Russians, uh, they're on the offensive now. Uh, as I told you, I mean, they've worn down. It was kind of like Garland Nixon. He says they've pounded the Ukrainians into oblivion. Uh, and by the way, we are at, at least 7,000 dead, 700,000, excuse me, dead Ukrainians. And I, I think it's more like about 1, 1. 1.2 million, probably approaching about 2.4 million casualties. Now, when you say casualties, that includes dead and uh, 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 permanently disabled uh, Ukrainians. Uh, that country is ceasing to exist as Russia advances. And uh, so they just took uh, 12 villages. Uh, we're looking at Kerkov. Uh, there was a battalion there that surrendered uh, before the Russians <laughs> even came in. I guess they've been watching. Now, here, here I, and I don't want to laugh. I mean, this is, this is so sad that we've pushed the Ukrainians into this, this horrific, horrible travesty. But the, the okay, and... and do you want to believe the Russian numbers, but the, 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 their organi the military organization there uh, reported that uh, 1,600 Ukrainians died the day before yesterday on the battlefront. Uh, now, I'm not sure if that includes casualties. It might be just 1,600 casualties, uh, so God knows how many did. And then 1,500 died yesterday. So it's just like after World War II when the Russian, I mean, the uh, Germans were fighting to the death. Uh, and they lost, I mean, they lost more in the last couple months. I mean, like Scott Ritter's pointed out, they lost more people in the last, you know, six months of the war than they lost in a couple years of fighting. So that's kind of where we are. Uh, and who was it? Garland, I think he said that, I didn't know, Ukraine means borderland. So why do you think the Russians are fighting so hard for Ukraine? Because they view it as their borderland. It's kind of like Mexico. If, if, if Russia came in and wanted to take Mexico uh, and, and threaten the United States, I do imagine we might consider that an existential threat. What do you think? I don't know. You, it's up to you. It's, and he, he made this analogy, and I, I always give credit where credit's due because Garland said it, it's like Thunderdome because uh, now we got NATO against Russia. And he said it's two men enter. One man leaves. <laughs> Remember that movie? I mean, if you haven't seen it, it was a good movie. It was a Mad Max movie. I, that was that was pretty cool. Uh, the latest long range uh, missiles, the Attackums, uh, they failed uh, miserably. Uh, I think they were trying to hit the Crimea Bridge. They've tried to hit other targets. And I tell you what, the Russians have adapted. Their electronic warfare is now the best in the world. As I as you know, I was an electronic warfare technician. In the Air Force, so this strikes home to me. I am sorry to see our enemies advance in such a, a, a magnificent way. I mean, I I never ever dreamed of having a, a an electronic warfare gun that a, a that a regular troop that could carry and shoot up at a drone and just send it completely just completely disrupt the GPS coordinates of that drone and just send it right off a target. And uh, of course, they've got the the much bigger. Uh, electronic warfare, which is what's, you know, these missiles, because you have to understand the West has never fought a war like this. We've never gone peer to peer with an enemy. And, uh, and so, you know, when we launched missiles, you know, we always had uh, satellites that could drive, drive these missiles in on GPS coordinates. Uh, they were always, or they could be communicating back to the equipment because the enemy was unable to jam the, uh, the, the, the signals that were going to the missiles. Well, guess what? The Russians <laughs> have figured it all out. So none of our shit is hitting the Russians. And so that's why they're on the offensive. Uh, I got two, uh, two clips. Uh, right now, the Russians, like I said, they're, they're advancing toward Kharkov. That's a new front that's just opened up in the north, if you haven't been following the news. And, uh, and the reason they did that is they want a buffer zone for Bel Belgorath. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, their city up there. Let's look at two clips on how that city was was being attacked. <laughs>
твою мать! Концовку. All right, so that's you know that so that's what they're trying to prevent. So they're they're going to push the Ukrainians back. Uh, and uh, there's only, uh, from what I've heard, 50,000 troops coming across. And I say only, I can't even imagine 50,000 troops. I mean, I think when I conducted my exercises back in the 80s with the Marine Corps, I mean, how big is a division in the United States? I'll have to look that up. Uh, I wouldn't say, you know, but it seemed to me massive. And I can't imagine 50,000 troops with God knows how many tanks. I, I've heard stories of like these, these villages where Russian tanks... <laughs> Coming in. Can you imagine looking out and you're seeing a, a hundred tanks coming from that direction, a hundred tanks coming from that? I don't care if you got a bunch of anti tank missiles. How many of them are you going to hit? And now they got that new turtle uh, uh, armor that's on the tanks. So the attack comes failed. Uh, oh, this was just something completely off the, the, the rail. The CDC is worried, war, you know, warning about bird flu. And I've got a, a tweet on that or an X post and uh, we'll get into that in a minute when I go through my X post um, by the way the uh, the bricks uh, uh, well of course Garland was saying that getting back to the Ukraine war that, that they're going to meet in June and discuss how they're going to lay down the terms to Russia <laughs> I don't think that's going to work Russia's going to roll over Ukraine like a freight train in the next couple of months but anyway so this uh, this BRICS conference uh, this coming up in two weeks has coming to an end. But what I found so interesting is that they've announced that they are in October of 2024. They are going to get away from the SWIFT system and they're all ditching the dollar. Now, how many countries of the world now are in BRICS? I don't even know. It must be 24 to 100, somewhere around in there. So that means most of the world's ditching the dollar. Uh, you know, right now we've got Japan that owns a lot of treasuries and the, the Federal Reserve is bribing them to keep those treasuries. And the dollar is doomed, man. If you don't understand, you need to get into precious metals. You need to start doing it. So let's get into my bookmarks and uh, we'll, we'll start talking about these. Oh, here we go. There we go. So this is Empire of Lies. I always get credit where credit is due. Israel is launching airstrikes on the Jubalia refugee camp again. With U.S. bombs dropped from U.S.-made jets, this is barbaric. The evil of the Zionist entity in the United States is beyond description. Breaking Israeli Air Force launches airstrikes, unleashing a barrage of missiles known as fire belts. That, by the way, these are incendiary rounds. They come down just like kind of cluster bombs, and they burn all the tents that the Palestinians are living in. And you saw George Galloway. And so we're mainly killing uh, women and children. Uh, but the Americans seem to be all for that, especially our politicians and a lot of Christians. A lot of Christians want all the Palestinians dead. I don't really understand it. Maybe uh, if you're a Christian, uh, you can explain this to me. I don't think Jesus would want us exterminating the Palestinians, even if they do hate the West. But, but they hate the West for obvious reasons. Uh, fire belts and refuge chants. G camps in, in northern Gaza, entire neighborhoods have been devastated by this type of attack. Now, I always have people that come up and they go, show me the evidence. Show me the evidence. Here, watch the damn video. Here you go. What do you think of that? What do you think them fire, fires are burning? That's in Rafa, baby. What do you think? You want those 2,000 pound bombs dropping on you in a U.S. city? I hope you live in, uh, uh, let, 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 let's say, Cary, North Carolina, or some freaking, uh, you know, New York City, or, or some other U.S. city. Maybe uh, when you get some 2,000-pound drop bombs dropping on top of your head, you might change your attitude, huh? Uh, Benny Johnson, uh, Trump, as you can see today, oh, this is incredible. <laughs> I thought this was amazing. Trump, as you can see today, we're expanding the electoral map because we're going to officially play the state of New Jersey. Uh, we are going to win the state of New Jersey. And, and by the way, he held this rally. And uh, good God, there was 80,000 to 100,000 people there. So I guess his criminal trial in New York City is not working out too good for the Democrats. And uh, so that's, uh, that's all good. Um, oh, this was uh, UFC fighter Bryce Mitchell's message to Ben Shapiro. By the way, Ben Shapiro, you know, if you don't know him, He's a right-wing lunatic uh, Zionist. 
And, uh, you know, he wants the extermination of all the Palestinians. And I fired Candace Owens, who was just making an argument on the other side of the fence. And uh, so he says he wants us to go and go die and bomb Muslim kids for the Jewish people. And this is him on, uh, if you ever haven't ever watched the show, uh, God dang it, I can't remember the name of the show. The, the, the twins, the, the conservative twins, the two black guys. So check this out. I die. thought I tell you right now. Fuck you, Ben Shapiro. I'll beat your ass. And look, if you mess with Candace Owens, I promise you, if you lay one little greasy finger on Candace Owens, I'm gonna beat your ass. I'm gonna roll up on you. Shirts off. I'm gonna have the twins with me. We're gonna beat your ass because you mess with Candace Owens. We're gonna be looking shirts off, me in the middle. We're gonna look like a six foot tall Oreo coming at you, buddy. We're gonna stomp your ass to the ground. Don't you mess with Candy, baby. I'm telling you right now. I don't like Ben Shapiro. I'll say it to his face. Bring him on the show. Because he wants he wants Christian people in this country that he already steals their tax dollars off of. Mm-hmm. He's part of this corrupted government. Mm-hmm. He's a piece of shit just like the rest of them. He wants us to go die to bomb Muslim kids mm-hmm. for his Jewish people because he's too scared to do it. How come Ben Shapiro, since he's all about this war, mm-hmm. how come he don't how mm-hmm. come he don't sign up for the army? Because right. he's a bitch. Yeah. I'm straight bad. up. These war- I tell you right now. Fuck you, Ben Shapiro. I'll beat your ass. Look, you that great? Oh, my God. I should have been holding it in front of the mic, but I wanted you to see him with the shirt off and everything. All right, so then uh, this is, um, well, S-P-E-T-S-N-A-Z-007. I love the handle. You know, maybe I should change mine from Kirk Ellis to something cool, you know, like... Uh, well, maybe you can help me help me find some cool shit to call my handle on uh, X. The newly supplied T90 Pro P R O R Y V tank in battle. After suffering multiple hits, it keeps moving with well functional turret. Doubt the Western tanks can do that, and the Abrams burn so easily from a single strike. So this is this is it. This is the tank getting hit. I mean, it's getting hit multiple times. I've never seen a tank survive like this. That's huge. All right, so I don't want to play too much because that's music, and uh, they, they put it to that. Uh, Empire of Lies. Israel's murder machine is like a rabid beast. It must be put down now before these monsters slaughter every man, woman, and child in Gaza. Well, that seems to be what the Christians in the United States want. You know, I really do think that uh, Lindsey Graham and uh, Mike Johnson and uh, who's the guy in Wisconsin uh, he was talking today, Sean Hannity, Todd Stearns, uh, you name them, man. Every every freaking right-wing lunatic, uh, they want 1.2 million people dead. Uh, whatever, you know, it doesn't seem right to me. Uh, I do understand that 6 million Jews died during the Holocaust, but I don't think exterminating 1.2 million Palestinians is, is, is a good idea. Uh, inverse, intense and hysterical Israeli airstrikes on northern Gaza have resulted in several massacres with over 75 airstrikes mainly targeting uh, Jabalia, Refu- well, the refugee camp. I mean, I don't, I don't know. You probably don't follow along on social media, but there's been a lot of video about these refugee camps that the Israelis have pushed the Palestinians into. And then they dropped 2,000 bomb palms on the top of their head, killing everybody in the refugee camps. So, you know, obviously all the Christians in the United States, they want the, the Palestinians dead. I guess that's a good thing. Uh, how will Joe Biden beat Donald Trump in November, and this was uh, more on the, um, the, the, the that huge, huge uh, thing that hap- took place. Dutch police bulldoze pro-Palestinian equip- encampment at the University of Amsterdam. Students were injured in the process. Uh, and, and so what we can see is all around the world, uh, the young people are coming up in arms, and they're the ones saying that genocide's not a good thing. It's all the old people that want all the Palestinians dead. I don't really understand it. I don't. I don't want the Palestinians dead. I want the Ukraine war negotiated and to come to an end. Uh, Vladimir Putin, Russia's dynamic leader, 
this is uh, this is a, obviously a pro Russian <laughs> uh, person uh, Z L A T T I seven one that I follow on X. Uh, as President Putin gears up for his inauguration, his impact on Russia remains profound, spanning political, cultural. By the way, I, I did want to talk about the election. So Putin got about seventy to eighty percent of the vote, and I know that most people in the West don't believe that the vote was real and it was rigged. I mean, it can't be more rigged than the United States. 81 million votes my ass. 81 million votes my ass. No way George Biden, Joe Biden got 81 million votes my ass. 81 million votes my ass. So yeah, the, our election was more rigged than the Russian election. But uh, so... Uh, this is a little bit of factoids you might want to learn about uh, Putin. I thought that early in life, born in Leningrad, now St. Petersburg, on October 7th, 1952. Can you imagine? Uh, I won't give you my birth date because I don't want too many facts out there about me. Uh, but that, that that's a bit for, before my time. Education, gradu graduated from Leningrad State University's law facility. I'm just telling you, I just want you might want to know some facts about Putin. I mean, he's a freaking smart dude, man. Even uh, Colonel McGregor, when I met with him down in Orlando, uh, he, he, I said, man, Putin is one smart dude. And he goes, yeah, he's, well, look at the country that he's leading. You know, it's kind of like Xi. Even uh, Colonel McGregor said Xi is a, an incredibly intelligent person. It's unfortunate that we've got idiots in charge of our government and everybody else has really intelligent people in charge of their governments. I guess that's what leadership does. Uh, law facility in 1975 and holds a he has a PhD in economics. Why do you think that Russia's firing on all thrusters uh, with their economic uh, picture? So rise to power uh, began in state security working in East Germany from 1985 to 1990. Remember back then under the Soviet Union. So I you know I wonder what he was doing back then and what his thoughts were. Transitioned to politics in 1990, rapidly ascended to key roles such as the chairman of the Committee for External Relations in St. Petersburg. National leadership became acting president of Russia on December 31, 1999. Elected president in 2000, re-elected in 2004, 2012, 2018, and 2024. So you have to understand he's been re-elected. You know, one of the things that I found very interesting is, and I wish we did this in the United States, you understand that when Putin was re-elected, the entire Russian cabinet resigns. And so they just resigned. <laughs> they all don't have a job right now. And so it's up to Putin as the elected leader to determine which one of them keep their jobs and which the ones go away. Wouldn't that be great if the United States cabinet all had to resign, you know, when Trump hopefully gets elected in November, and then it's up to Trump to determine which ones keep their jobs and which ones go away. I mean, I, I think that's phenomenal. I think it's a great way to govern, and I, 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 like, I respect the Russian way of governing their people. Uh, record turnout. Won the 2024 election with 80... Oh, I didn't realize it was this high. 87.28% of the vote with the election turnout at a historic high. By the way, can you imagine 77.44% of Americans voting in the next presidential election? That'd be a good thing. Uh, Republic Service chairs the Russian uh, Geographical Society and the Board of Trustees at, I can't pronounce this, La Monso, L O M O N O S O V, La Monsov, Moscow State University, personal interests, avid sports enthusiasts, enjoy skiing, playing hockey. Judo, well, we have, I don't know if you've ever seen him in judo. He's pretty damn accomplished. Uh, I imagine he could kick Mike, Mark Zuckerberg's ass, and Mark Zuckerberg is a pretty doggone judo expert, if you didn't know that. Uh, even though uh, Elon Musk wants, <laughs> wants a death match with uh, Mark Zuckerberg, well, which they, I think Elon Musk would lose. I, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think Elon Musk would lose? Playing a hockey, judo, and a, and a black belt in karate. Um, so that's damn pretty good. Uh, I don't want to read too much more. This video is getting too long. Uh, uh, so this is just more about his inauguration. So these are getting back to old stuff. Let me get into some of my latest posts. Uh, uh, let's get in here. We'll go to uh, profile. So these are some replies that I put up. Um, I, and this is what I said because... 
and this is why you know I don't right now there's um, I think it's like 300,000 Palestinians that are being pushed into uh, temporary camps I mean can you imagine living in a tent in that heat over in the Middle East and uh, so the Israelis are either pushing them out of Rafa and uh, they want Egypt to take them and so because the Arab nations are all cowardly uh, and don't care about the Palestinians. So that was what a reply I made to an Egyptian post uh, saying that they, they don't support this, but they're not willing to do anything about it. If, you know, Either accept the Palestinians into the Sinai Desert there in Egypt, which they would all die anyway, or, um, or, or take some action. And if you watch the videos, I mean, right now Israel has violated the Abrams Accords and they've invaded territory of Egypt. But Egypt is just going along with it. They're cowardly people, man. These Egyptians don't really care about the world or their own territory. It's amazing. Uh, I don't remember Brazil sending aid to Florida after a hurricane-devastated event. So we're sending aid to Brazil, but I don't recall it, Brazil sending aid here to Florida when, when our hurricanes hit here. Uh, and this was made a General Flynn, Mike Pompeo, and Speaker Johnson I said, you all need to travel to Gaza to join the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, and kill, baby, kill. So I put some damn guns in these politicians' hands, send them into Gaza, and let them start shooting Palestinian civilians, because that's what they're doing anyway. I, I, I imagine a little personal one-on-one -on -one with them killing Palestinian civilians might, uh, might bring home a different reality for them. But, you know, that, that's okay. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, uh, well, this was somebody that, that, that responded that the dollar is, 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 is going to be okay. I said, no, most definitely the dollar is devaluing fast. Uh, watch my latest video on X and YouTube at that cybersecurity go. Also, the burn on Rumble. I'm going to go ahead and promote my channels. Uh, by the way, this, <laughs> this was the one about the CDC that they are trying to push the bird flu. Now, the bird flu could be real. But I'm not going to sit in my home. I'm not going to listen to these idiots anymore. If I go out and get a bird flu and die, I really don't care at this point. I want to live my life. I want to try to, to develop my business. I want to take care of my house. Uh, I want to do my finances. And they're not going to, they're not going to seal me in uh, ever again. And uh, if I had kids, there's no way they're masking my kids ever again. Uh, so uh, this is... Uh, Empire of Lies again. Why don't the uh, moral nations of the world unite and invade the evil Zionist entity? Well, that is never going to happen. Uh, and create a no-fly zone over Gaza. Israel murder spree would be stopped one way or the other. Well, a no-fly zone over Gaza would be a good idea. Uh, you've seen my, my opinion on that. And then, uh, and then, of course, once again, because all the Arab nations are cowardly and don't even care about the Palestinians... Uh, this was this was Simon. By the way, this is the black guy that challenged Biden. He, he, he went to press conference after press conference for like six months. <laughs> and nobody, they wouldn't even call on him. So finally, he just jumped up and, and got in their face. I imagine he can't go no more, but I follow him on X and uh, he's got a lot of good things to say. You might want to follow him. It's, it's S-I-M-O-N-A-T-E-B-A, -A, Simon At Atba, uh, out of South Africa. He said, just then, President Biden says the United States is working to provide necessary assistance to the Brazilian people following devastating flooding. We just talked about that. Uh, let's get to a couple of posts. Um, that, well, that's talking about that. Well, yeah, and this was, this was one. Uh, these people are divorced from reality as Russia kills, well, I said 1,000 Ukrainian soldiers a day. Uh, and this is the Russia supplender surrender plan from victoria newling she was the top of the state and you'd have to look at the surrender plan for for russia <laughs> like they're gonna surrender at this point <laughs> oh my god i they, 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 our elite our government is completely divorced from reality and that's why we're all gonna suffer uh when the dollar dies uh we can all report on the news identify what is wrong in the world but can we do and that's the, the latest video go up on x check it out that's it for the video. Peace out. Stay free. Watching the world burn. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. 
Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.